Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so these are the four things that I'm going to cover today. First, um, let's look at what kind of apps in Hong Kong makes the most money. Um, if you are aware, if you have an Android phone, um, you click to the Google Play Store icon, and then um, we have top chart. And this top chart get refreshed frequently. Um, it's kind of real time as well. So when you look at what kind of apps makes the most money, it's actually mostly games. <laughs> OK. And now, what's the appetite for Hong Kong people? What kind of games do they play? Um, as you look at it, it's, it's very mixed. As World Cup is coming, there are actually a lot of soccer titles. Um, and I got approached by almost 10 soccer titles these days saying that I have my marketing plan, I'm going to spend a lot during this World Cup period um, and run a lot of promos. Uh, is this by download or by activity? This is by revenue. By revenue? Yes. So, so how do you assess the revenue? Okay. So yeah, in that purchase. For games, even for... Even so that imagine Netflix uh, or Spotify, right? Um, when you install the app, mm -hmm. you sometimes need to subscribe. And this kind of in-app payment okay. is actually captured. But pay through uh, Google? Pay through okay. Google. Okay. Um, right. And developer gets 70%. And Google Play gets 30%. That's a rev share model. Same for games. Games, Pokemon Go, Candy Crush, there are ways for you to buy mm -hmm. like extra gems, you power up right inside the games, and that's actually how these guys are making money. Okay? Um, games are profitable. Um, a lot of these, when you are seeing those in, in Top Chart. Um, Hong Kong people love playing Japanese games. Okay? I think it's legacy, the manga kind of um, when when you're kids, you watch, you watch cartoon. Um, so a lot of manga games, when you are looking at like Fate Grand Order, like RO, these kind of, it's manga style. Um, and we actually like Three Kingdoms style as well. So what's the ballpark figure for, let's say, top games? Um, mm. So it varies, but the really, really top ones, think about it as making like millions of dollars per month USD. Well, yeah, it's what the users are paying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and you see Pokemon Go here, like ranking here, somewhere here, right? Um, you see Candy Crush here. Um, and a lot of st hardcore strategy games over there as well. So, games. And then, now you ask me, okay, what if I'm just focusing on apps, right? What kind of apps make money? Um, these are the apps that make money in Hong Kong. Dating apps. I think that's human needs. So Tinder, this Tinder. I think a lot of you guys know Tinder for casual dating. And this is Sweet Ring. It's also a dating app, but it's for serious dating. Meaning if you are looking for marriage, then a lot of people will, will, look at, uh, will install Sweet Ring and um, subscribe to the plan. Uh, these plans can be a monthly plan. So that so what it does is when you subscribe to it, then you get to have maybe more matches, and you get to talk to those matches online, and you get to meet with people offline, etc. But if you do not subscribe, you do not pay, and if you're just a free user, then there's definitely a certain limit to using the app. Okay, um, dating, live streaming as well. Live streaming. Um, are you guys familiar with the Zigball apps? Seventeen, yes, they just uh, announced IPO as well. So yeah, from Ta Taiwan, from Taiwan, Taiwan. So it's like ball app. What what it does is, um, big yeah, it's like big big channel. Uh, you can watch some host um, talk about themselves, play music, etc. Real real time. And these people, what they pay for, they they give them flowers, they give them coins, stickers, etc. Um, a lot of guys pay in their live streaming apps. And dating actually is a lot of guys paying as well. And entertainment, entertainment apps like Netflix or even View. View actually um, did make money from his apps. Tools and music, Jukes, KKBox, Move, these are all uh, very typical apps that make money. All right, so this is the Hong Kong landscape for apps. So that's actually how I cover trending apps so that you get a sense of what 
what I mean, what kind of games and apps actually make, make the most money. But if you're asking about the most downloads, the most in stores, it's definitely messenger apps, right? WhatsApp, Facebook, um, the standard ones. <coughs> now let's talk about how to improve your Android app quality. So if you do have an app, um, do you check on your user rating? Okay. I assume you publish your app on Google Play, um, and then there is a rating of how users rate you. Um, and in our internal research, we actually believe that if your rating is around, let's say, three point something, okay, and this is actually what I usually see that's very common. The Hong Kong apps are usually three point something. And if you can jump to four point something, um, it's likely that you can get a four times of conversion. Because every user's phone, there's a limited storage, right? So everyone needs to really decide if this new app is worth downloading because it takes up space. Um, and in other countries like India or emerging markets like Indonesia, right, the phones are not that high-end phones. The storage is even lower. So whenever they install a new app, that means they need to delete an, another app, right? That's why user rating is one of the things that users look at to decide if this new app is worth downloading. Um, then, of course, I recommend you, and I'll also give you some best practices in terms of how to, how to optimize your app and how to get higher rating. Okay. Um, and then, now let's move on to a design topic. Design is actually, a UI design is actually one of the things that you can do to help improve user rating, usually. Um, one thing that we'll recommend is to take a look at the material design library. Um, that's Google's um, official design library. Um, let's use Facebook as an example. Okay. Many years ago, Facebook will use just one design for Android and iOS, totally the same. But then they realize that they actually have a lot of Android users in this universe, like India or other countries, right? So they need to customize the UI a little bit for Android. So when you use an iPhone to open up Facebook versus an Android phone to open up Facebook, you can still recognize its Facebook app, right? With the same color, with the same brand image. But then for different platforms, they actually tweak it a little bit. For example, Android search bar and the iOS search bar is different search bar, right? When, it, when we talk about UI design, it's all about details. iOS search bar, they use the iOS library. Android search bar, we use the Android library, okay? Um, so use the official library and the tabs Android users usually like it on the top, right? Versus iOS is in the bottom, okay? So we have the entire design guide if you are into this um, and we believe that if you optimize for Android in terms of UI, your users will notice it and then, then tend to kind of like your apps a bit more than if you are plucking an iOS design on an Android app, right? And this is actually what we will not want to see is when you open up an Android app, it looks completely like iOS. So this will be kind of red flag when we, when we are doing featuring review as well. <coughs> Um, it's a PDF, so it doesn't play, but um, I'll skip this for now. This can, this can also explain the idea. So New York Times, um, they did a redesign of the app before and after. Before, it's kind of black, white, gray, congested, right? Kind of older font. And then afterwards, they redesign it, enlarge the image, more white space, and then they adopt a lot of features in the design library. This, this is what we call tabs, and this is the navigation drawer, and this is all um, specs available in the library. Um, with this upgrade, users kind of like it more, and um, Google also recognized it and nominated it as the best apps of the year in 2014. So UI can help improve user rating to a certain extent if you do it the right way. Um, so, anyway, I think the gist of it is Android has a design guide if you want to use it. Um, and this is what we preferred as well. Okay, so after talking about design, let's talk about stability and, and performance. 
Uh, this may get a bit too technical. Um, let me know if that's the case. But if you do work on your own app, I recommend you to log into your Play Console because we now help you track stability and bugs and also battery consumption as well. So what it means is, just now I talk about UI, if it looks good, right, to a user. And now I, I talk about if your app crashes, okay? So usually if your app crashes, people are very likely to leave you one star rating. Um, and we, I have heard my partners talk about you need 13 five stars to compensate one one star. So if you want to catch up on rating, try to minimize one star, okay? So if your app does crash, and also one star rating 50% of the people uh, of the time user mentions the app stability in the box, right? If you leave one, st uh, if you see one star. Um, so this is actually important. Make sure your app don't crash. Oh, and apps with high crash rate have 30% more uninstalls, right? So in that case, um, if you have a play, basically if you have an Android app, go to a Play Console and look at Android Phytos and check out your red flags because they talk about crash rate, slow rendering, battery consumption, etc. Okay. So this is a bit technical, but um, we have free tools for you to use to make sure that your app don't crash. Okay. These are the three things that we track and uh, you can actually have the data as well. Okay. You guys have questions? Yeah. How does Android or I mean Google deal with uh, with so many different versions of hardware and uh, different versions <coughs> of Android stuff there. Yeah, so... Because out there in the market, you can see anything from Android 2.0 up to 8.0, or even 8.1. Yes, usually we look at the most recent versions, like 6.0 and above. Uh -huh. um, and I believe for the really old versions, we may not, we may not really uh, track it, okay. because we believe that users have been upgrading the versions already. Um, and in this kind of case, we are tracking thousands of phones. Um, and you can actually see what kind of models is tracked as well. So would it be more unfair to app developers if someone is using an old phone and they're giving, oh, this is consuming my battery a lot, and, or this is crashing every day, so I'll give them one star. It will really hurt the company. Yep, I think that happens a lot too. Um, in this case, we have um, we have a guide, best practice guide, in terms of how to target these users. Uh, we have a guide called the next next billion users. Um, that's the guide for developers when their users are in India, like emerging markets, Brazil, etc., um, and in, in basically tell them how to optimize the app for these countries. So uh, to to solve this problem, okay. Um, if you guys are okay, then I won't dive in dive deeper because that may get technical. Okay. Uh, okay. Next, how to make money on Google Play? Okay. So just now, I think one of you guys asked questions regarding um, how to make money on Google Play and how billing works. It's basically here, right? Inside the app when you find a paywall and you want to pay for other product and services, you just click subscribe, and then that should tie into your credit cards or to uh, here, to whatever, here. To, in Hong Kong, we have gift cards. You can buy it in 7-Eleven or Circle K or other, other uh, even Pacific Coffee, I think we sell gift cards too. You can buy one gift cards, and then you can just um, enter the code in your Google Play account, and then you have some balance over there and you can pay using gift cards. Um, I mentioned you can pay by credit cards, Visa, Master, AE, and we also have direct carrier billing as well. So what it means is your phone bills every month. When you pay your phone bills, you can also pay your Google Play purchases. Okay. Uh, so these are all the options that you can choose from when you want to pay. Um, oh, and this is, I think it may be irrelevant for you guys, but what it means is when I talk to developers, partners, um, they ask me how to make more money, then I tell them it's subscriptions, uh, this business model. Why? It's because it's auto-renewal. Income gets more stable, right? If you are purchasing for IAP, it's one time only. 
Uh, you pay 50 bucks and that's it, and then you use this service. But for subscription, it means you're paying 50 bucks one, the first month, second month, third month, and fourth month, it's all auto. So um, we do see 100% increase in active subscribers uh, from the Google end when, when we look at all kind of developers. Uh, this is what I actually talk to, when, when I talk to news publishers, they ask me, um, so what can I sell? Um, so subscription package ideas, basically it's to upgrade to be a VIP. Okay. It applies to apps and it applies to games as well. Um, so if you're a news app, let's say uh, Penguin App or whatever, if you provide offline reading, okay, that's advanced kind of features, right? If um, people can actually download some of the archive articles um, and they have some um, basically great commentary, um, remove ads, it's, all, it's often used. Um, and then they give up coupons. If they have like coupons to the supermarket, etc., and some kind of advanced high-tech features as well, this can be one package, and you can sell it, right? Um, so a lot of times, news publishers are only making money from ads, but we do believe that if they think about how they package other stuff that they have, um, they can actually they can actually offer subscription package as well, so that they can have an extra revenue stream. Uh, yeah, so if you guys are interested, I can talk more, but if not, I can skip. Um, subscriptions, we have these kind of um, periods for people to choose from. Dating apps, most common period, they won't do yearly because you don't want to find a boyfriend or girlfriend in a year, right? You want it quick. You want it quick. So <laughs> the most common bot package is these two for dating apps. For news, it can be three months or annual, right? So it really depends on the category. All right, I'll skip this. This is just New York Times case study of how they offer subscription and how that helps with the revenue as well. All right. Okay. Um, lastly, I think for the more advanced um, developer, when you are interested in getting featured in Google Play. Um, this is where me and my team allocate slots, right? Like these big banners. Um, and that requires going through a featuring review, uh, user rating 4.0 or above, and there are certain criteria as well, which I covered already. We review UI, make sure it doesn't look like iOS, Android friendly. We reviewed stability as well. Um, no crashes, etc. It's free. Uh, it's free, yeah. Featuring is not ads, so it's not paid. It's all free. It's quality gated. Okay. Um, How long is the window? So, this is also another type of featuring. It's appear on the home page. This may last for a week. Okay. Um, for so apps, one, one this one may be like three days or so. Yeah. Uh, but this, of course, have higher higher bar to get there. And these um, just need to pass a review. And, and is uh, regional specific? Yes, you can, you can select featuring for global, you can select featuring for only Hong Kong. That's fine too. Um, but that's where people come to me because I need to manually nominate, um, saying that, hey, I know this app, I support it, and then kickstart the review process. Yeah, so this is the games role, and a little bit down below you'll see apps. Apps usually featuring last for six weeks. Okay, and that's the home page of Google Play. All right. And now, as I mentioned, how to get featured. It's quality gated. We look at these three things, plus more. But these three things, usually uh, where people are stuck. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at these apps. So there are actually a lot of good apps built by Hong Kong. Um, I don't know any of you know any of these, but we can actually try. Hong Kong TV. Hong Kong TV Mall. Any, uh, any others? Lala Move. Lala Move. Go Go Van. Go Go Van. Go -Go Van. Go -Go Van. Go -Go. Kluk. 
Yes. Move. Yes. KK box. Any others? What's top, top left? Oh, this is Move. 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 Um, it's with PCCW. It's a music app. Okay. Now this is, huh? SCMP. This one. That's SCMP. Um, this is Yahoo News, right? And then, yeah, this one is a Chinese English dictionary. This is an incubate uh, at the Hong Kong Science Park, and they're doing really well. Um, this one is Hello Talk. It's really up and coming uh, uh, startup. They do multilingual chat app. So basically, if I'm from Hong Kong, if I want to learn Japanese, they can match me up with a real Japanese on the other end, and then you guys can do to chatting. Um, and this is Long Leg app. Uh, so all of these have been featured in Hong Kong. They have passed kind of the quality bar. And um, so it's actually not that difficult. If you guys are really interested in, in, in doing this, um, you can reach out to me as well. Okay. Uh, that's about it. Any questions? It's, um, it's a quick one. Questions? We, we contact you via email. You have a contact? Um, I don't have name cards today, but I can leave you email. Yeah, no problem. Questions? Seems like you are. What is the, um, like the, the trend of MPC with these apps? Like, I mean, we're, uh, you're with, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, so, like, uh, how much are we engaged um, with Google? Like, have changed the, the way we Mm -hmm. the, the way we obtain information, the way we communicate with each other. So, like, what is the, the, um, the next trend that you're seeing um, out there? I mean, it's often talked about is AI, right? Like machine learning. Um, if you have um, pay attention to the recent news, um, have you looked at Google Duplex of how AI robot? Can call a restaurant, yeah. right? Cool. Yeah. So that's actually the level of where we are. Basically, the direction of where we are going is machine learning and AI. Um, but it seems like really advanced. Um, I don't think a lot of developers are ready yet. Um, instead, I think it's it's more, I would say, more from labs and research center um, that I see people really developing for AI and machine learning. Um, and in terms of really applying to day-to-day -day life, something that you are seeing already, like chatbot, like Facebook, right? When you ask a question, then you get automatic response. These kind of chatbot actually have some AI running in the background as well. Um, and also when you are, I don't know what kind of phones you have, but if you have an Android phone, so you just say, OK, Google, what time is it? You get a response as well. Right? And, OK, Google, what's the temperature now? And they tell you as well. So these kind of things should actually be, be emerging more and more over the years. Yeah. How is Google um, trying to, I know, obviously, Google, big, big competitor is Apple, right? But with Google's Android, um, there are so many versions of there's so many uh, different hardwares. How is Google viewing that? Is it, is it an opportunity or is it time to unify it as, you know, to become a strong force against iOS? So we have always kept ourselves as a very open platform. And we see that as a competitive advantage as well. So imagine kind of like iOS, what's the next version of iPhone, right? What else can they do? But for Google, if there are so many brands out there, some brands can really be focusing on really good camera. And some, uh, some phones can be having a really good game mode for gamers, right? So in that case, we actually have the advantage of really positioning ourselves in many different angles. And then we also have wider price range as well. Yeah. 
really high-end phones. So nowadays, a Huawei phone is actually doing really well, right? And Samsung going to the high end. Yeah, and Pixels as well. Hopefully, it can come to Hong Kong um, soon. But you also get like lower-end phones like Xiaomi. So I think it actually catered to broader audiences, and except that's why we're especially strong in emerging markets where people are price sensitive, that they cannot really afford for an iPhone. Um, that's why we don't really see ourselves like, like unifying anything, but instead we are trying to build a stronger platform. For example, uh, making it more secure, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how we're looking at it right now. Yeah. So I think we actually have pretty good market share, let's say in Korea, Taiwan. Taiwan is 80-20, right? Like 80 Android, 20 um, iPhones. So in some countries, we're pretty good. In, in Southeast Asia, we are almost like dominant. But in Hong Kong or Japan, we are kind of 50-50. Um, I guess it's also due to people's purchasing power. Um, and also the brand sensitiveness of pr having an iPhone seems like it's more kind of like upscale thing, right? So I think we do need to tackle that area, but um, we don't really think ourselves as competing. Um, it's just how the market is like. Sure. Yeah. Um, my my app uses uh, some Google services mm -hmm. as well as Google Vision. Yep. However, um, in China, it's ah uh, yeah. So I got this issue, huge issue. How um, how does Apple and I mean Google and address this? So in China, there's no Google Play. So that means you should be publishing on different stores in China. Um, the mainland well, stores. In, the group, in um, Chinese phones like Huawei, Vivo, and, mm -hmm. and Oppo, like Oppo, for example, they, their version of um, Google is different, right? Yep. They, they build on top of it. Yes. Um, so e even today, they, they don't, they're not compatible with Android 6.0. So my my software require six upon six mm. point one and, and later. So I have a problem installing on those phones. Yeah, well. <laughs> we have a team working with Huawei and all these OEMs as well. So I think it's an ongoing discussion with these OEMs at a bigger scale. But for you, I would recommend you to split your APK for China specifically versus your other global. So not using Google services. Yes. So Google services work for some parts, right? But if you talk about vision, it's not working. Then probably you need to check out the Chinese um, alternative. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now with, yeah. with the latest trade war going on, uh, going to, um, do you see the Chinese going to come up with their version of mobile platform that which completes Android? Well, I think. I mean, Tencent arguably is a platform already, right? It's really strong. <laughs> um, and you I mean the WeChat, WeChat, WeChat platform? They have, they have many, many apps yeah, mini as well, apps. right? So it's already strong enough and they have games. So but they do run on top of Ang uh, Android. Yes, they do run on top of us. I'm saying that they probably will go down and replace Android. So do this you see that? I don't yeah. think it's happening. Um, that's already happening in China, right? But for non-China, I don't think that sure. that can that can work that quickly because they don't have the resources. Yeah. But then China, China may have the resources too, and they may have a vision. We a reason, you know. You don't know if they going to ban uh, China going to use Android. Ah, okay. Well, this foreseeable. Then a lot of the Chinese companies will be out of business as well. So. Well, you look at yeah. CBE. I mean, we, we haven't really discussed this part of the thing yet uh, within the company, but um, it would be interesting to read about Tencent all the time. Um, think about some of the games, the top games, Wang Zhe Wang Yu. Surprisingly, they don't really earn that much globally. They earn a lot within China. They don't earn a lot in the US or other countries, right? So I think it's the acceptance. Yes, so let's say if they're really successful in China, it doesn't mean that they are capable enough to localize it in the Western markets. So that's why you can see that like NetEase, Tencent, they're head to head in the games, uh, in, in terms of games revenue. Um, so I think there is still a learning kind of um, 
some learning lessons for some of the Chinese company when they really want to go global, um, even though they are really back in their own country. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you.